Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be working on some garden maintenance. I have a fountain to clean out. Uh, it's the big fountain. I haven't cleaned it one time since I started it this spring, so it's pretty bad at this point. I've got perennials to cut back. I wanna clean out some raised beds in the vegetable garden and get some more seeds planted, uh, trees to prune. I honestly don't know how much we're gonna get done. We're trying to um, do garden maintenance in the morning because it's been so hot. Like today, it's still supposed to be 106. We have another 108 degree day coming up. It's just like, oh, so we did this last Last week where we just showed you a bunch of projects I was working on and uh, we filmed it in a way a different way and you guys seem to enjoy kind of the change of pace so I think we're gonna do that here for a little while maybe once a week where I can just come out here get a bunch of stuff done but then I can still share with you what I'm doing and you know my process and that sort of thing um, in a way where I don't have to put my sweaty red dirty face up to the camera throughout the whole process anyway so we're just gonna start in I hope you guys enjoy I started with a little bit of work in our raised bed vegetable garden. Now this area gets full sun for pretty much the whole day and I think that's why everything really likes it up here. Not to mention the fact that it's a gravel base, I think it gathers a lot of heat and makes things grow quickly. There were a few things I wanted to tackle in this space starting off with harvesting the rest of our Copenhagen Market cabbage. This is the same variety that we just harvested a bunch of out in our cut flower garden. I grow this variety every year. It's a 65 to 80 day maturity and it produces consistently nice size heads of cabbage. Now these four had aphids pretty bad. I did not wanna spray them with a pesticide though, so I just let them be figuring that I could peel off the outer layers of affected leaves and that the interior would still be fine. And that's exactly what happened. When I pulled up that very first cabbage plant, I unearthed a nest of 15 quail eggs. I felt so horrible. I knew quail were around there nesting somewhere. I had no idea that was the bed they were nesting in. And once you un unearth them, you can't touch them or move them around. And there's no way that they would survive our 108 degree full sun. Aaron and I were trying to figure out a way that we could either shade them or like plant something new around them. But uh, we thought in the end, the safest bet for these eggs survival was to contact a friend of mine who actually lives right down the lane from us. She has an incubator and she's hatched quail eggs before. So we took them down to her. She got them all set up in the incubator and even tried to candle them where she puts them over light to see if birds were forming. And they haven't started to form yet. So she thinks the eggs were pretty fresh but they should be fertilized because there was a pair. There's both a male and female running around. So uh, I will give you an update as to what happens with the quail eggs. You just never know what you're gonna run into in the garden. Next, I harvested our Ruby Perfection cabbage. These heads were quite a bit smaller, but honestly for red cabbage, we don't eat a ton of it. So it works out really nicely for us. I think the plants are so beautiful. I would grow them just for that really. But I needed to get these cabbages out because I knew that the irrigation has not been functioning properly in this end of the bed. I've been having to hand water those cabbage quite a bit. I decided to get a weight. I'm trying to be a little bit more diligent about keeping track of how many of everything I'm harvesting and the pounds I'm harvesting just for fun, just to see what we can get from our space. So I think it ended up being about 15 and a half pounds of cabbage, which I then put in our root cellar, which I'm keeping it at about 60 degrees right now, which kind of just a little bit cooler than outside for sure, 40 degrees plus cooler than outside and it keeps them nice just long enough for us to eat them. Now that the beds are clear, I decided to test the drip system. I got it running just to see if the whole run wasn't working or if it was just a part of it. Sure enough, it seemed to be working okay toward the beginning of the run of drip line, and at the very end, it wasn't dripping at all, or very little. To fix it, I decided to do two things. One replace the drip line completely. I cut out the old stuff. I think maybe we had been going on season number three of that old drip line. Uh, so it's kind of bound to happen with our hard water. It eventually kind of clogs up some of the um, emitters. And then two, I decided to run it in more of a grid sort of system. So I ran an exterior uh, run of drip line all the way around the edges, connected it back to itself, and then ran two more individual runs in between. So I've got four rows of drip line in each like three foot section of bed. I also made sure to, to clear out the filters. You know, sometimes there can be a little bit of junk that collects in there that would, will um, impede water from flowing nicely. So we got those all cleaned out, got new drip run and everything was just dandy after that. And I actually did that in both beds that the cabbage came out of. To prep the bed for the next planting, I put some land and sea compost back in the back part of the raised bed. The front part actually has calendula, zeolites calendula planted. It was only coming up properly on the left side because that was the only side where there was water. Uh, but the back side there, we put the compost in, some biotone starter fertilizer, and then I used a very long auger 
to drill some holes in uh, the raised bed down into the native soil because underneath my raised beds, it just goes straight down into the regular soil. There's no liner or anything like that. Um, I needed to get them deep enough to insert some bamboo stakes because I had two more tomato plants left in our greenhouse that I wanted to get planted. And I will just um, train them onto these stakes and keep them heavily pruned. I say that now, <laughs> we'll see what happens. They'll probably be an overgrown mess here pretty quick. Um, but one of them is a garden treasure, which is a slicer type tomato, and the other one is a garden gem. And these are ones I started fairly late in the season, but they should take off with the amount of heat we have here. Next, I replanted a little bit of those calendula seeds. I had a few left, thankfully, in the packet, and I was able to pop some in where the other ones had not come up because they were too dry. And then I planted some jade bush beans around the edge of the tomato side of the bed. So that one should be very full here pretty quick. Now in the first raised bed where I harvested the green cabbage and we found the quail eggs, I also have some dahlias in there. I think they're called mystic lavender. They're really pretty dark colored leaves with delicate lavender colored flowers. I planted those on a day that was pretty hot, but then we proceeded to have a 50 mile per hour dust storm that same evening. I didn't know it was coming and it broke a lot of them off at the base and I was kind of hoping that whole back side of the raised bed would be filled with those beautiful flowers. But I only had enough in the end just kind of move them around around that obelisk in the back. But it's kind of perfect. It opened up the rest of that bed to plant a marigold called Cracker Jack, which is a tall marigold. And the name Cracker Jack, that's what my dad calls Benjamin. So it's kind of a fun raised bed for him. Now I needed to address some corn that needed to be thinned. So I planted three rows of glass gem corn in this three by six raised bed just a few weeks ago. And it has grown so fast. I normally would try to thin it before it got to this stage, but it doesn't really matter. The only difference is that at this stage, instead of pulling the extra seedlings, I cut them off at soil level, so I don't accidentally disrupt root systems and wreck plants that I wanna keep. But oh my goodness, it looks so much better being thinned. It looks like those plants can breathe. The amazel basil needed a little bit of attention as well. I have six plants in this three by four raised bed, which honestly, they get so big that I could probably get away with two, but I really like this basil. Um, the thing I like about it is that it just started to bloom while all my other basil has been blooming for a while. And even after this one blooms, it doesn't affect the flavor like on other varieties. You know, sometimes it can make it bitter and taste off. Um, with the amazel basil, it doesn't do that. It maintains the same flavor to me anyway. And in the last raised bed I wanted to work on in this space, I have Walla Walla onions planted. This is a three by four size raised bed and I started these onions from seed inside early on. Now you can see that there was a water issue in this bed too and I think that's why they're flopped over and a little bit brown, not because they're actually ready to harvest. Typically in onions, you'll look for the tips will start to brown and then the um, stalk right above the onion will start to soften and the tops will flop over. That usually indicates that they're ready to be harvested. My other ones, I've got about a thousand out in our cut flower garden and those aren't ready quite yet. This bed was not getting enough water. Same story as the other two beds we just worked on. So the row closest to me as I'm pulling them up, they were much bigger than the row closest to you. Um, so you can see that there's a huge size difference. I just decided to pull these up um, just because I've got so many other onions growing right now. So I can have some fresh onions to use in the kitchen. And then also I've got a short day pumpkin I wanna plant in this area. Um, if I get it in the ground now, I can get some pumpkins from it by the end of the season. So anyway, just decided to get those pulled. After the onions were all harvested, we took them to the barn to lay them out on our table. You can see that the garlic is now all gone. That has been all cleaned and it's now in the root cellar being stored. Um, when the onions sit here, they'll sit for week 10 days or so. As they dry, the onions uh, sugars will be condensed, enhanced, the flavor will improve, uh, and the storage life is actually a little bit better uh, as opposed to if I tried to just throw these right in our root cellar right off the bat. And once the drying process is done and I get the tops cut, I will get a weight on those onions. Erin said I should get a weight today, but that's kind of padding the weight to weigh them with all the greens on them. When I was working in the vegetable garden, I realized how much our weeping willow had grown. And it does need to be trimmed a good three or four times a season because it just grows that fast. But it had gotten to a point where the mower was having a very hard time getting under it. It was hard to walk under it to get through the arbor, to get to the vegetable garden. And parts of it were laying on top of the arborvitas on the backside and shading them way too much. So I decided to take it up quite a bit and take out some interior branches 
just to eliminate some uh, weight because willows tend to be a fairly weak tree and we have to try to keep them pruned up enough so there's not a lot of stress on the branches. So if we get a big windstorm, we don't have a huge part of the tree come down. I really, really love this tree and I wanna try to keep it healthy and happy for as long as possible. By the time I got it done, it was just so much better. I think the arborvitas will be so much happier. You can almost hear, hear them breathe a sigh of relief to not have that big shroud over the top of them. And it was much easier to maneuver under and around. I just wish I could stay on top of it a little bit more. I never do. It'll be that grown out here in about another month. The very last thing I wanted to do for the day was to address the state of our Grand Kensington three-tier fountain, which we put in two or three seasons ago. Set it up this spring and I have not cleaned it one time, which I should have this on a monthly cleaning rotation. I just haven't figured out how to work that into the schedule yet. It kind of just gets you know cleaned whenever I have a chance. So you have to take the uh, plug out of the bottom level to drain that, and then there's a plug in the level right above that. The top two do not have plugs. There's no way I could navigate my fingers in. There's not that much space in those two levels. So anyway, we got those all drained out. You can see all of the, just the gross algae yuck that's coming out of there. And then I scrubbed it down as best as I could. Now I could not find the proper brushes. I usually have a brush that's small that I can get into the little cracks where the water runs from each level and I couldn't find that. So I just decided, you know what, it doesn't matter. I'm gonna try to clean the fountain as best as I can today and I'll do a better clean later. Uh, but I was happy to get it to just, you know, a little bit better than it was. It gets kind of like this pink residue on it. I'm gonna do some research. You guys probably know some really great cleaners for concrete. Um, anyway, it really needs a thorough going over at some point. And Benjamin joined me for this part too. He loves to be a help, especially when there's water involved. And once we had it all scrubbed down, I put the plugs back in, we filled it up all the way, we turned the, the fountain back on and the pump would not work. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I've had problems with this pump all season. Every time I have to shut it off for any reason, it never wants to turn back on. Usually I can hit it a few times and mess with the propeller and it'll turn back on. And I could feel this one like it still has some, it's working somehow, but the propeller's stuck. Um, so I could not get it to work. So I ended up swapping it with another pump that I had out in the barn. And I, I don't think that this pump's gonna quite cut it power wise, but it'll limp us by until I can get a new one. Anyway, so in the end, I think what I'm gonna have to do is drain the entire fountain again which will give me the opportunity to clean it really, really well. And then we'll fish a new pump into the reservoir and put the cord out properly out the bottom. Until then, I'll have a cord running out the side and that's okay, as long as the water's moving so it doesn't get gross on us. Well, I've had a chance to cool off for a few minutes and I'm really happy with everything that we got done out here today. Of course, there are always things. For me, I don't know if it's like this for all of you guys, but every time I set off to do some projects, there are always other things that come up. Like today, um, the drip. I didn't anticipate needing to replace the drip uh, tubing in both of the beds that I harvested the cabbage out of. I did not anticipate running into a nest of quail eggs. Um, I also didn't anticipate the pump not working in the fountain or not being able to find my fountain brushes. <laughs> to clean it. It was just like one thing after another. Still happy though with everything that got done and I was able to kind of make a mental list of everything else just in the areas I was working that I'd like to get done here pretty quick. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I appreciate it so much and we will see you in the next video. Bye.